So we're just going to talk a little bit about um, utterances and um, what an utterance is and then parsing um, because it's uh, part of the beginning of learning how to code. Right. So um, an utterance is a complete thought and every time a complete thought is changed it is a new utterance. That's right. Yep. A new complete thought or a new idea. Right. And so if um, if the client or if the practitioner is in the middle of what we call a volley and the client interrupts and says, yeah, or right, it does not mean it is a new utterance. That's right. In the old days it did, but now it doesn't. Correct. All right. Because they're just facilitating or prompting. Mm -hmm. or moving it along. Right. But if they... Um, you just did it. Uh, did I? Right. <laughs> okay, good. All right. So, and an utterance actually could be fairly long. Mm -hmm. you know, especially like if someone's doing like an intervention, uh, sh uh, explaining something to a client or something like that. And to clarify uh, volley, um, oftentimes I visualize a volley as a two-person interaction. Whereas in the Mighty Coding and, and World of MI, a volley is done by uh, the practitioner and it is a series of ideas done by one person. In this, right, in this particular coding, yes. it is. And then there's lots of other coding instruments, one called the MISC 1.1, where all they do is code the client. Correct. And change talk. So this is just about parsing the practitioner. You're mm -hmm. right. So I was trying to um, think of a way to explain parsing, and somehow I must have been hungry <laughs> uh, because all of a sudden I came up with the idea of um, how to explain the behavior counts and how to parse them out. Mm -hmm. And so maybe... And how many behavior counts are there? Altogether five. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So do you... Um, what? Uh, well, they have various different little... Um, things that would go into a salad. Okay, and so I know I have a couple of them right here. We could each take one. I'll take this one. This one's funny. What does this look like? It's a, it <laughs> looks like a cucumber. It is Dr. a cucumber. <laughs> and this looks like a tomato. I kind of like an apple like a tomato. Well, I took so. the stem off. I just ignored that phone. Okay. So. All right, so anyway, uh, how about if we start with, um, am I adherent? Okay, because right. that's the one we all really, as practitioners, um, do want to actually try and get really proficient at. Right, because it's really Mia Heaven. And Heaven's always nice. Heaven is always very nice, and practitioners really want to do the kind of things that give them am I adherent uh, type things. So uh, you can put yours I'll down. I'll put my, my, my one that's not am I adherent down. Okay, so um, so they would include uh, affirmation to affirm the client. Mm -hmm. And by affirming the client, we, we say things that will give them a certain amount of confidence. Um, in what they had just spoken about. Um, for example, I I just feel that I would really, really, I would really like to be a better mom. I'm just not sure how to do it. And to get to Mia Heaven, to get to a Mia adherent, I would say, you want to be a good mom. That's all it would take. You want to be the best mom you can be. Okay. So that's nice. So affirmations and then um, asking permission. Okay. Asking permission also goes into the Mia adherent um, behavior count. Mia heaven. Mm-hmm. Mia heaven. Yes. Yes. Asking permission. Um, I, I want to really want to get back to my relationship with my daughter. Um, I just, and I know there's so much information out there, I just, I get so overwhelmed. I don't know where to start. Well, I have 
have some other clients who've had some similar experiences to you, and I could share with you some of their experiences if you'd be interested in that. Okay, yes, I would be. Okay, great. So, because the asking permission sometimes is really hard because the one that most people are taught is, if it's okay with you, can I blah, 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 blah. And so we've been working, I know I've been working hard on different ways of asking permission without annoying my client. Asking permission also requires a response from the client? It actually doesn't. If they don't say, um, no, shut up, uh, don't tell me anything, um, it, you, it's implied that you can go on. There is an implication. Yeah. So, or if they ask you a question like, can you, can you give me, could you give me some information about my teenager daughter that's making me crazy? Yes, I could give you. I could give you that information, right. and I could give you that information right now. Good. And so you don't have to say, is it okay if I give you permission, right? Because it's implied. Mm -hmm. Okay. It tends to be a little redundant otherwise. Yeah, it's, it's um, the healthcare people actually come, have come up with some really good ones. So, and, and our, our folks will be um, getting um, some actual suggested ones that we've come up with. Some examples? Some examples, yeah. So, um, support. supports, um, this is a secret. This is like the secret missile of MI, I think. Ooh, secret. It's secret missile. Okay. Because it's so easy. So, um, so I'll be a client. So when I got arrested, I, I was out on the highway and, and, um, the cop put me in handcuffs and, um, was shoving me around and he made me sit in the back seat and then when I got to the police station um, they they shackled me to this to this bench and it was terrible that must have made your whole world fall apart it did so that's the support and that that's very nice because it's just a coming alongside the client without colluding with them is another way that I've um, tried to think about it, especially like when they're talking about illegal drugs and stuff, and because we can't say, yeah, love that heroin, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you deserve to have those shackles. That's <laughs> <laughs> the walls came tumbling down. Yeah, yeah. That was a good. That was a good coming alongside. So, and supports are easy because sometimes you can just say, uh, that must have been real hard, or that must have been. Mm -hmm. It must have been painful. Because it was. Yes, that's exactly and right. And it's sincere. Right. It was hard. Yeah. It's opposite of cheerleading. Yes, cheerleading, um, if somebody says uh, in a session, um, good for you, or good, or great, um, we'll give them one hash mark for that. But if that's the best they can do with the information, they don't get any more hash marks after that. Okay, so that was a firm. Yeah. So the support is... Just, just trying to feel what they feel, mm -hmm. and and addressing it exactly. Yeah, not moving, not not dismissing it at all. Mm -hmm. Addressing it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that will get them a mia, a mia, a mia. And then the last one is um, autonomy, autonomy support or autonomy statements, and those are kind of hard, and a lot of times people don't hear them because they are addressing um, people's, um, not only their right to choose and things like that, but also times in the past when they've made good decisions. Oftentimes it's, it's about um, catching people doing what they've done right in the past and helping them resource that. 